Hey guys, what's going on? This is Bailey Ike Brett from the Serious Angler Podcast. And uh, if you guys saw, I posted a video on how I set up my 2020 Hobie Outback. And uh, I mentioned in the video that I would post a performance review as well, like on the water, my thoughts, pros and cons. And that's what this video is gonna be about. So if you're curious on how the 2020 Hobie Outback performs, this is gonna be your video, so stick around. So as you guys can see, uh, it is December. You can see the snow behind me. We're up in New York, only a few trips left to open water before we're full blown ice season. And uh, you know, many of you guys might be making a decision uh, come springtime. Maybe you're watching this because you're trying to decide what kayak you wanna get in the spring. So this is why I decided to make this video for you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a few different things uh, with the Hobie on steering, uh, speed, performance, stability, all that jazz. I will not be doing a stability test because like I said, it's December in New York, not a smart idea. Uh, so if you're looking for that, I apologize. So with that being said, we're gonna start off, I'm gonna show you guys the pedals in front of me, this deck room here, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so as you can see, we're in the kayak. Uh, for your reference up here in the top right corner, my Lawrence. That is how fast I'm going. Um, just so you guys know, when I start pedaling around, you can see how fast I'm going with, with either with ease, and I put some muscle into it and that sort of deal. But you see this front deck, I'm 5'11 for you guys as a reference, uh, and I kind of fill out the whole deck. So I will say, and I will admit, measuring fish, if you're a tournament angler up here, can be kind of tricky. Um, obviously I'm not as flexible here because I'm bundled up in winter clothes, uh, but there is not a great, a lot of, deck room here um but i will say the accessories up here do make it worth it um but here we're gonna start pedaling here uh, i will say if you're a bigger person you know what you have to do with these these pedals here uh you push these buttons these are two buttons here and you can actually move them if you can see here you can slide them forward and that basically you know if the shorter you are the closer you're gonna want these to be so the taller you are the farther back giving yourself more leg room if that makes any sense so here we're kind of gliding around along and keeping references i'm on a river system that's pulling against me so just remember that so we're going to start pedaling here um it is very easy to get this thing moving it is pretty quick to be honest and turning i'll show you guys in a second i have my turning module on the left i also have one on the right so whichever hand you want to use that's one thing i do like about the the hobie as all of them have that but as you can see, I am starting to pick up speed. If you're looking at the top right corner, this is this is easy for me personally. Moving along, and we're gonna probably hit 3.6 to 3.8, I'd imagine. So as we start putting a little more muscle into it, you know, your tournament morning, you're trying to do uh, get to that spot first. You're going, you're going, you're getting 4.3, and if you really want to kick it in gear, this baby can move. See if we can hit five. There we go. So you can hit five if you're really trying to move. But at a nice leisurely pace, you know, especially if you're going without a current, you could probably hit about four, 3.8 to four. So personally, I like how fast it moves. Uh, so that can show you guys how easy this thing glides. I mean, we're making decent speed, decent distance at a very leisurely pace. So. Next, what I'll do is I'll show you guys how quick this thing turns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my turning module and I'm gonna turn it all the way to the left. And I'll show you guys how fast this thing turns and we'll do a complete 180 and then we'll do a 360. So we'll start with the 180. So I'm gonna turn it all the way. You can see how quick that thing turns. You can see the bubble track from there. So really not bad. My bubble tracks are right here. So really, I didn't move a lot of distance when trying to turn around. This thing did a 180 pretty quick at a tight radius. All right, so I just showed you the 180. We're gonna go with the current here, and then we're gonna do a full 360 and see what our radius is and how easy that turns. So we're going along here, we got three miles an hour. I'm gonna turn it all the way to the left. You can see how quick that thing turns around. We're turning, we're turning. You can see the bubble trail right behind us. I 
and we are there. So you can see a pretty tight radius for when you're trying to turn a full 360. So it's not bad at all. Uh, it's pretty tight. I used to have a wilderness radar, and not to throw anybody who owns a wildy under the bus, but that thing turned very slow. So this is kind of a nice change of pace. So as we turn to go back upstream towards where we're going to fish, it's nice and quick and easy. Now, I will say to, to try to get into these pros and cons here of the Hobie Outback. Um, granted, it does move quick and it does turn pretty quick. That being said, it is a lighter kayak and also you are much more um, affected by wind and current, if that makes any sense. So any sort of wind, any sort of current, you're going to be affected more than, say, if you have like a heavier kayak like a pro angler. So I would say that's one of the cons for me because I do like to fish offshore. Um, there's certain times where you need that specific cast and it can be kind of difficult to stay in line. Obviously, that's more of an advantage if you have the 360 drive. This is still the 180, uh, so that can be a little difficult. Um, but that's personally, if you don't have that problem, if you just want to beat the bank, go along, this is perfectly fine. Uh, you can cover a lot of water in this kayak, uh, being that it is so light and that you have the options. Um, it's, it's something you can go quick, cover a lot of water. If that's your style, that's perfect. So I will say if you're looking for one of the older Outbacks, uh, the 180 drive can be kind of annoying. Um, but obviously there's a 360 drive. So if you're looking for that, that is a great asset. Amazing, amazing drive. But I'll show you with the 8180 drive uh, why it can be kind of annoying if you don't have automatic reverse. So if you're going along, I'm going to give you guys an example real quick. I'll show you how to use it. Uh, see, you have your reverse and you have your green, which is forward. So as you're going along, if you want to go reverse, you got to pull it. And then now I'm going in reverse. So we can go back here, back to forward, and now we are going back forward. So I will give you an example of how this can be kind of a disadvantage. So you're going along, say you're on the bank, and you go and you cast at a dock, correct? And you cast a dock, catch a fish, but you are still floating forward. You catch that fish, you're hooking into them, you know, the last thing you want to do is relieve any tension. So obviously you don't want to be reaching back and trying to get that fish and re reaching back and you know eventually possibly losing that fish so you have to somehow reach and get that reverse so that you can keep yourself in a place to then obviously not lose that fish if that makes any sense and then obviously in current too that can be a uh, that could be something that could be tricky to play with obviously you got to approach your boat positioning you got to take that into account much more with a 180 drive versus a 360 or as well something with automatic reverse um, so I will say that I'll be bluntly honest. I told you guys, I'd be very transparent with you as much as I am a, a Hobie lover. I am brutally honest with the products that I use. So I believe that covers most of the performance review of the Outback, uh, turning, moving, going backwards and reverse. It is pretty quick. Like I showed you guys, it glides along just nice. Um, I will say the seat is very comfortable. Uh, I think it could be better. Obviously, if you get like a kayak cushion, uh, it could be extremely comfortable. Um, but I have had zero issues thus far, and I've had issues with other kayaks with how comfortable the seat is. Uh, after time with them becoming, you know, if you're in it for an hour or two, it becomes a little uncomfortable. I haven't had that problem yet. Um, in the back, obviously, your rods are very close to you, so it's really not an issue. Um, turning on it, standing on it, I mean, I'll show you guys here in a second. I think that's one thing I needed to do as well, is show you guys how how it rocks, a little bit more stability. Like I told you, I can't do a full stability test just being that it's so cold out here right now. Um, but uh, I hope that kind of covers most of it. So here, what we'll do is I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna lean and try to rock this, show you guys a little bit of stability thing, just to see what we can do here. And really, I mean, I'm putting a lot of my weight side to side and I ain't going anywhere. Now, standing up on it, I will tell you, it can be, if you have great balance, perfectly fine. If you're somebody who is a little bit nervous about your balance, I don't recommend it in cold water, <laughs> uh, to be completely blunt. Uh, I mean, I've never had an issue, but I've also only had this this fall, and I haven't tried standing up in it too often. But when I have, I haven't had an issue. Uh, it's probably just not, obviously not as stable as one of the pro anglers would be. So I believe that about covers everything. Uh, that we can go over with the with the Outback besides a stability test. Um, but I hope that uh, answers some of your guys' questions if you're looking to 
obviously get into a Hobie, uh, specifically the Outback. Once I get into the Pro Angler 12, I will then continue to do a review and performance test once I've broken that in and gotten used to it. Um, but I hope that answers some questions. Please feel free in the comment section below to you know, ask some questions and I'll get back to you quickly. Uh, as well as you can go down below uh, to our social media links if you're not following uh, Serious Angler on social media already. And uh, feel free to shoot us a message over social media um, and, and, and ask some questions about the kayak. I, I have no issue in trying to help people make their purchasing decision. Uh, I have zero bias. I think everybody has their own niche that's good for them. And I think that's super important to bring into the purchasing decision that just because one person uses one thing doesn't mean it's good for you. So put that into perspective. I hope this helped. Again, reach out to me on social media if you have any questions at all. I do not mind. And uh, hope that, like I said, hope that helped. And uh, thanks again for tuning in, for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Check out the Serious Angler Podcast if you've not already. See you guys later.